In recent years, you can't stray away from the name Mike Dean, especially if you listen to hip hop. Virtually everywhere is a face that, for once, doesn't go on notice for his spectacular work, which is not the most common among many other producers. So who is Mike Dean and how did he help bring forward some of the biggest projects of the last three decades? Born in Texas in 1965, Mike Dean began with music at a very young age, around his school, which led him to becoming Selena's music director in his teens. He denied a Berkeley scholarship to tour with Selena and cut various albums, only to have this come to an end upon a group disagreement. From this ending, he would find himself inspired by Rick Rubin in the late 80s, who was breaking records in the music industry with Beastie Boys License to Ill and Run DMC's Raising Hell. Dean joined Def Squad, which would be the best decision that he could ever make. He was able to do much more and balance the skill set of mixing, mastering, and producing, thanks to John Bido of rap -A Records. Since he was based out of Texas, it was the perfect time for him to move forward, as the southern hip-hop scene started to bloom with Ghetto Boys and UGK, both acts that he was heavily involved with. He geographically expanded outside of Texas to work on various groups such as Gangstar. But what makes Dean unique is that he didn't forget about the South even though he expanded, producing some of the biggest albums to come out of there in the late 90s. What really separated Mike Dean from others is that even though the bloom of many of these acts didn't make it past the early 2000s, this was not the case for him. He started producing for many West Coast icons, such as Corrupt and E-40, but his next breakthrough connection would come sooner than he thought, by going to his hometown roots of the South and working on Scarface's The Fix where he would stumble upon everyone's favorite, an up-and-coming 25-year-old by the name of Kanye West, leading to 2004's heavy hitter, The College Dropout, followed by 05's late registration and 2007's graduation. Kanye and Mike Dean as a group was an unstoppable force, gaining various Grammy nominees and even winning one for a good life. But as emerging into the 2010s, he ended those years with his last ode to the South, with UGK's final LP, UGK for Life with essentially no better way to begin the greatest decade of his career. The Mike Dean that we all came to know very well started to shape himself within these years. So what makes a good producer? A producer takes a sound an artist feels and brings life to it through music. Dean himself said it's more of a psychological connection than anything, which is why artists find a good producer and don't want to let go. Like how Madonna won't start her shows without having Mike Dean dealing with the sound check which is also why Kanye sees him and Mike Dean as a band, and a trustworthy person to bring his ideas to life. He owes a lot to Kanye as much as Kanye owes a lot to him. He even said that Kanye revived his career, quite literally since he started working with him. When I place the importance on the connection a producer and artist has, this reaches another level with Kanye. He said that Stronger off graduation had 14 people mixing just one song, where each person did 20 mixes of the song, only to put out three different people's mixes together to make today's version of Stronger. Looking back on psychological connection, he helped Travis Scott shape himself into the artist he is today. This connection is essential to both of their careers, as Travis and Dean share the same home state of Texas. Even through Astroworld, he was able to integrate essential homage within the album through sampling artists from Texas, which helped Travis find his voice throughout the album, especially through the Big Tuck sample on Carousel. Astroworld further proved this as it was a career-defining album for him. Mike Dean even stated that Stop Trying to Be God was one of his favorite songs that he worked on in the last decade. He also said that it took over a year for that song to come together, which puts perspective in what it really takes to create an album like Astroworld. He also found himself touring on some of the biggest shows in the last decade, such as Watch the Throne, The Yeezus Tour, Bird's Eye View, and The Astroworld Tour, further solidifying himself with some of the biggest artists in the world. Although his synths are on some of the biggest tracks of the last few years, a great example to look at his work more technically is on St. Pablo, off of The Life of Pablo. He uses the Roland Juno 106 as the synth in the main verse. The Roland Juno 106 is a classic from the 80s that pairs perfectly with Kanye and Sampha on the beat. While in the third verse of the song, a Moog Mother 32 trails into Sampha's lyrics. The synth itself consists of sawtooth oscillators with the filter and envelopes open. The glide being turned halfway up creates a sliding effect within these notes. 
The psychedelic effect that Mike Dean commonly uses is done through the heavy delay, which is set to repeat, which creates a call and response effect, with the end product being another classic of everyone's favorite duo. A strong psychological connection that an artist has with the producer is essential for success. They both depend on each other equally, but one will always be overlooked. So next time you look at those producer credits, remember to appreciate the ones who are an extension of the artist. Because without a great producer, most of your favorite pieces of music would have never come to life. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I want to hear what your favorite producer and artist combos are. Also, what are your favorite synths or tracks by Mike Dean? Don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next time guys.